All right, we'll call the meeting to order. Madam Clerk, please take roll. Commissioner Phillips. Present. Commissioner Sobek. I am here. Commissioner Thomas. Here. Vice Chair Metalko. Here. And Chair Lee Meyer. Here. And will we all please rise for our flag salute? Put your right hand over your heart. Ready, begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We have no agenda modifications tonight? No, sir. All right. No additional presentations? No, sir. Speaker slips for items not on the agenda? We do. Bill Stevens. Thank you. I appreciate this opportunity. Uh, Bill Stevens, I live at uh, 29487 Meandering Circle in, in Menifee. Um, as I drive uh, Newport every day, I notice that the landscaping is still kind of undone. And I was kind of wondering why I looked up and it looks like uh, the bid was supposed to be awarded uh, 7, 16, or 14. So I wasn't sure what that, what that hang up was. But besides that, um, by profession, I've been in the water industry for 30 some years. I was with Eastern for uh, 29 and now with Rancho Water District as a senior water resource planner. My biggest concern is um, how the city is addressing the state's uh, mandate on um, the, some of the water restrictions. I notice as I drive up and down a lot of the city areas, I notice a lot of the irrigation um, is uh, flooding in the gutters and the city could be fined for that. So I wasn't sure if anyone's looking at that and making sure that the city is in compliance. If you look at Eastern, they do have each um, meter of the city and its allocation. So I'd hope somebody is actually monitoring that so the city's not hitting those additional fines that would throw them into a higher allocation, which would put an undue um, stress on the on the city's resources anyways so that was kind of my main concern and ironically enough I went into the bathroom and the toilet was running so I thought there again a uh, silent toilet is about 40 gallons a minute or excuse me 40 gallons a day the one in there running I'm estimating probably about a quarter to a gallon per minute so um, I just hope the city's being vigilant in that because there again um, the city could look at some pretty strict fines for that and um, Part of that too is not only gutter flooding, but hosing down of, of areas that are not for sanitation purposes. So I hope this is being conveyed to the city workers and to staff that it does trickle down. Uh, I know that the outreach through water districts and the newspaper is pretty stringent, but hopefully somebody on staff is kind of monitoring the landscape company uh, that uh, they're kind of keeping their feet to the fire because the water waste that I see is, is pretty horrific out there and uh, I'd hate you to see the city get into any type of uh, restrictions or um, fines with that. So I guess my question tonight, besides the water waste, is the bidding award. Um, where is the city with that? Um, we can allow Jonathan to answer that question. Yes. Um, thank you very much for coming in tonight uh, to bring the, these uh, issues to our attention. The, the, you're right. The project was bid. And the award was stalled because I was in the process of hiring a senior uh, a senior engineer in the CIP department who I believe was uh, the right person to lead this project. He is on board. That uh, award, I believe, is going forward to council on the 20th to award that project. The uh, designer that we had designed that has designed low, uh, uh, low water use plants, drought tolerant, uh, this is a bad word, but uh, that's a good word. Plant, plant, well, plants that plant are tolerant. native well, to California. Tolerant, but they Pl be pretty. Plants, <laughs> right? Working with the commission here, but plants that uh, will survive on recycled water, right? right. And uh, I will give you my card, and I welcome the locations that you were talking about, uh, where you visually saw excess water use. We have limited budgets in our LMDs, and we're always interested in ways of conserving that budget. So uh, I have a limited staff, and I rely on the citizens as inspectors to bring these things to our attention. Well, I'd be glad to help in all I can. I'm very familiar with water budgeting and uh, the efficiency through drip irrigation or overhead sprays. Water districts have all kinds of rebates from turf removal. They're looking at uh, $5 a square foot. 
Right. Um, that's in October, so it hasn't been released yet, but just to let you know, it's on the plate. So nice. from nozzles to controllers to turn out non-functional turf, definitely go that way because water is, you know, we live in the desert and it's becoming more scarce and it doesn't look like that relief is going to happen any year soon. So I'm, I'm here to help to do all I can. If I could look at water bills and balance out the water allocations, work with the landscape contractors, I'm all in it. So just, I'd be glad to help. Thank okay. you. Thank you, Mr. Stevens. And others? Katie Manier. Katie. Well, I'll just real quickly add to what this gentleman just said because Ms. Kinsey that used to sit on this panel works for EMWD now and says there's no problem with water shortages so the developers can just build all they want in this city. There's no problem with water. So you may want to check with her about how they're saying that. Anyway, on to another topic. I want to ask why this city is still making backdoor deals. I've talked about it and I've talked about it and I've talked about it and there's still backdoor deals being made. They're leaving the planning commission out of deals. They're calling meetings off, canceling them so that they can just do whatever they want through the city council. And I'm sure you're all aware of it. We're having special meetings. There are special meetings still being hold, held. Wally, Greg, and Roxanne still seem to be meeting, meeting at the Beer Hunter. I don't know what they're discussing. Uh, that doesn't seem like it's appropriate. She was solicited to get the storage container ordinance finalized. Now that that's done, I want to know what the official business is that she's dealing with. She is not a homeowner in this city. Why she has any input on what homeowners does is beyond me. Then I want to ask Mr. Thomas, why are you holding a candidate forum or a meet and greet or whatever you call it for a person that's not from your district? I understand you were going to have a meet and greet yesterday for a gentleman that's in District 2. You live in District 3, I believe, unless that's changed. I think if it's held, it should be held so all the people in the district are invited and can listen to what this person says. How will we make an educated vote if we don't have a clue what this person stands for and yet we're told we can't come to these meet and greets. They can be private, they can be whatever. Anybody can hold them. People are in this town are starting to get the picture of what goes on between you and the city council and I think it's not good. I think more people need to see the light. I'm going to be keeping an eye on what goes on, as well as some other people I know. Then I'd like to ask Ms. Sobeck, that I would recommend that you take off your rose-colored glasses and see what this city is really up to. I had hoped when we got a woman on this planning commission that it would be a strong woman that could stand up for herself, speak her mind, and instead we got some little milk toast person that takes orders from other people. I think with your religious affiliation, you should stand for morals and integrity and honesty. And none of that is being done between you and the city council. And it's embarrassing. And I think we have enough beer and wine and liquor distributors. I don't know why that's on the agenda tonight again for three more facilities. We have people in this city now that are living in halfway houses that are recovering from all this and on every street corner there is something with beer and wine and liquor and and we've got brew houses everywhere i think it's enough no further speakers. speakers no further speakers all right we'll move to the uh, approval of the minutes from july 22nd are there any modifications to those minutes Hearing none, I can entertain a motion to approve. So moved. There's a motion. Second. second. Sorry. Oh, motion second. second. All in favor? Aye. 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 See nothing on our consent calendar tonight. No, sir. Um, we'll go to item 9.1, the public hearing for the development agreement, 2014-069. Uh, rather than reading all those numbers, I'm going to call it Heritage Square. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, Lisa Gordon will give a staff report on this item. Thank you. Good evening. Uh, we have Heritage Square Shopping Center. This project involves an extension of time for the originally approved plot plan 2009 three conditional use permits, and a development agreement. The project site is located north of McCall Road and west of Menifee Road. The general plan land use of the site is commercial retail. There's commercial retail to the south and 2.1 to 5 dwelling units an acre to the south, 
to the north, you have 8.1 to 14 dwelling units an acre. To the west is public facilities. And to the east is the Menifee Valley Ranch specific plan, which designates the property for residential uses. The site is currently vacant. There is vacant property to the north and to south. Uh, residential uses to the east and south and Boulder Ridge Elementary School to the west. The extension of time is the third and final one-year extension of time for plot plan number 2009051. Then that plot plan proposed a 132,580 square foot retail center. These are elevations from the project when it was originally approved. The developer would move forward with these elevations. Uh, I'm just giving you a sample. If you wanted to see more of the elevations, those are available at the end of the presentation. The colors are earth tones. They used stone, a lot of uh, trellis shade structures. There's quite a variety in the roof heights to break up the, the building mass. The plot plan was originally approved by the City Council on June 1st, 2010, concurrently with three conditional use permits. Prior to the City Council approval of the project, the Planning Commission considered the project at three of their meetings. Two extensions of time have been approved for the plot plan. To be included in the development agreement that's before you tonight, the third and final extension must be approved. The CUPs that were approved with the original plot plan have expired. Uh, CUPs are only good for a maximum of three years. Therefore, to be included with the proposed development agreement, the uses reviewed and approved under the original conditional use permits also need to be reapproved. The conditional use permit proposals are identical to what was approved by the City Council on June 1, 2010, and recommended for approval by the Planning Commission before that. The, fir the first. S excuse me, Lisa. I, I'm sorry. I don't, I don't mean to interrupt this. Um, I, I just realized something. Um, in the interest of transparency, I need to actually recuse myself from this item and uh, hand over the chair to uh, Commissioner Matelko. Um, I'll, I'll step uh, out. On what grounds? Um, the Rancon group is actually holding a fundraiser for me at the end of this month. So I need to recuse myself. Your floor. Okay. Conditional use permit number 2014-155 proposes the development of a convenience store, car wash, and gasoline service station with the concurrent sale of beer and wine for off-premise consumption. A CUP is required for this specific use per the Scenic Highway Commercial Zone and Ordinance 348, the section that deals with off-site alcohol beverage sales. Conditional use permit number 2014-156 proposes to allow the sale of distilled spirits and beer and wine for off-premise consumption for the drugstore, which is major A. The future drugstore slash pharmacy requires a conditional use permit for alcohol sales because the building in which the use may be located in contains less than 20,000 square feet of interior space. Um, that's a special requirement from Ordinance 348, the section that deals with alcohol beverage sales. Please note that the grocery store will not require a separate conditional use permit for alcohol sales because the store is over 20,000 square feet in size and is primarily engaged in the sale of groceries and does not sell motor vehicle fuels. So our zoning code does not require them to get a CUP for alcohol sales. Conditional use permit 2014-157 proposes to allow for the seasonal sales area and recyclable collections area associated with the grocery store. Uh, pursuant to the zoning of the site, the use is permitted with a plot plan in the zone that have more than 200 square feet of outside storage of display materials require a conditional use permit for the outside storage of display materials. The site plan below identifies the area for recycling and the area for seasonal sales. These areas were chosen because they were um, still somewhat in the public view, but away from where the majority of traffic and vehicles would be. The development agreement is a proposal for the City of Menifee to enter into an agreement with the Heritage Square LP <coughs> for a term of five years with the, with the possibility of extensions totaling up to five additional years. The agreement is intended to extend the life of the entitlements for the shopping center due to the requirement for major, major drainage infrastructure, the Line A, 
to be in place prior to the issuance of a building permit for the project. The drainage infrastructure required to be installed is required to be installed prior to construction of the shopping center is part of a regional project and the Riverside County Flood Control District is the lead on the project. It is anticipated that the infrastructure should be in by mid 2016. However, the plot plan will expire on June 1st, 2015 and no additional extensions are available through ordinance 348. The shopping center project is well designed and desired by the community. Therefore, the extension of the life of the project provided for by the development agreement over what would be allowed under ordinance number 348 is considered a reasonable request. The development agreement would obligate the owners of the shopping center to construct their project and road improvements in compliance with the city council approved project and conditions of approval. The development agreement would obligate the city to allow by a five-year life for the entitlements with the possibility for a, an additional five-year extensions um, that would ex extend the project beyond what is allowed by the ordinance currently. The agreement does not include fee credits, waiver of fees, or freezing of development impact fees. They would be subject to any development impact fees that, are, um, that the city adopts in the future. The development agreement cannot extend the life of applications that have already expired. Therefore, the new conditional use permits and an extension of time on the plot plan need to be approved for the terms of the development agreement to apply to these applications. Um, some issues of concern, the approval of the conditional use permits also requires findings of public necessity and convenience. Since we originally approved the project, or since the City Council originally approved the project, there have been uh, updates to the census tract for new boundaries and updated population counts. The project is now in a brand new census tract. ABC criteria has established that one license is the limit to the ratio of retail establishments to population before an undue concentration occurs within the census tract. This license, the one license that um, ABC has determined is, could be allowed without the undue concentration, has already been issued to Plaza Wine and Spirits, which is located in the Bel Air Plaza. The Bel Air Plaza is the shopping center located on the northeast corner of Encanto and Shadel, uh, just north of, or next to the Bel Air Mobile Home Estates. Therefore, the Planning Commission must adopt findings of public necessity and convenience to approve the conditional use permits that propose the sale of beer, wine, and distilled spirits. These are the new census tracts. Um, our project is, the project before you tonight is located in census tract 427.28, which is pretty much in the middle of the screen. The census tract before they weren't broken down into such small pieces. And you can see that the Heritage Lakes development is in a census tract to the east, and there really isn't much commercial in that census tract that's in the city of Menifee. The number of licenses allowed in a tract before ABC determines an undue concentration of licenses exists is based on population. The census tract within which the project site is located only has a population of 2,266 people. Most of the census tract is designed or designated for commercial, office, and industrial uses. There are three large residential tracts approved to the north of the site with 980 lots and approximately 2,900 future residents. Existing residents in Heritage Lakes to the east of the site have requested more shopping opportunities in their area. Currently, the closest shopping center is the Ralphs on Newport and Antelope or the Sun City Shopping Center located west of the 215 on McCall Boulevard. The Plaza Wine and Spirits Liquor Store, uh, the only other opportunity within the census tract to buy alcohol for off-site consumptions, is located two miles west of the neighborhood. The Heritage Square Shopping Center would provide another opportunity for residents to buy alcohol in the city. In addition, because the Heritage Lake Shopping Center is closer to the residential uses within the Heritage Lakes community, other advantages of locating additional alcohol sales here would include reducing vehicle miles traveled, roadway congestion, and usage of fuel. Residents of the Heritage Lakes community would be able to walk or bike to the Heritage Square Shopping Center as the shopping center will provide sidewalks and trails. 
Additional off-site licenses at the project site would provide a public convenience to the surrounding residential development. Um, there is a 500-foot setback to schools uh, required per the Menifee Municipal Code. Um, this applies to liquor stores, mini marts selling alcohol, and service stations selling beer and wine. Uh, the siting provisions apply to this gas station convenience store, which is located the required 500 feet from the neighboring school. The provisions do not apply to drug stores such as Walgreens or CVS. The convenience store is located over 500 feet from the school's property, but over 900 feet from the closest school building. The site is buffered from adjacent residential and school uses by site design, including placement of buildings, parking, landscaping, and walls. There's a significant amount of landscaping within the project and around the uh, property lines to buffer the site. And the project has been conditioned that no beer, wine, or other alcoholic beverage advertising shall be located in such a manner that could be viewed from the school and no displays of beer, wine, or other alcoholic beverages shall be located on the exterior of the building or within window areas. At this time, staff recommends uh, that the Planning Commission adopt resolution PC 14175, uh, recommending that the City Council approve the extension of time. We recommend that the the Planning Commission recommend that the City Council adopt a finding of public necessity and convenience. Uh, recommend that the Planning Commission adopt Resolution PC 14176, recommending that the Council approve Conditional Use Permit 2014-155, and um, we recommend that the Planning Commission adopt Resolution Number PC 14177, recommending that the City Council adopt or uh, approve the Conditional Use Permit 2014-156 adopt the resolution uh, for Planning Commission recommending that the City Council approve Conditional Use Permit 2014-157 and adopt the Planning Commission resolution recommending that the City Council approve the development agreement. This concludes staff presentation. Do the commissioners uh, have any questions of the staff at this time? Uh, I just have one uh, and I asked it in the, in the meeting earlier that there's no um, there's no changes to the project other than extension of time. We just wanted to verify that. Uh, no, there are not. We did um, some of the exhibits uh, might change very uh, just a little. There were some conditions of approval that the Planning Commission added in 2010 for an entry sign at the corner that's not shown on the exhibit now, so that'll be changed. And then um, on the elevations, we added a couple conditions because when we reviewed the development agreement and we're looking at extending the life of the shopping center for five more years, um, we looked again at the exhibits and we found a few uh, areas at the loading docks where we thought they should add a screen wall or modify the materials of that screen wall. So we added a couple things to make it nicer. Um, and, uh, um, Lisa, on the CUP, on the where it talked about um, the advertisement of the of alcohol that would continue where that would not um, be allowed anywhere on the outside of the buildings or on the windows correct it is a condition of approval not in the development agreement it's just a condition of approval the development agreement one of the attachments is the conditions of okay. approval yeah I, I i was a little concerned because i remembered when that school was built it was a middle school yep and I was like elementary so I actually called the district office today and I did talk to the facilities uh, gentleman there and um, he did uh, let me know that it's always a concern when you have that kind of thing but he said they don't have the foot traffic anymore of mm -hmm. a middle school they moved their middle school and they turned it into an elementary it is a um, parent pickup school mm -hmm. there's not not hardly any foot traffic at all um, he and I do know that the residents in that area are crying for a shopping center and it, so what I'm hearing first I thought it was just a one-year extension and then <coughs> um, as I read it but then I didn't realize it could be a 
possibly a 10-year extension we're looking at. Is there any way that we can adjust that where it could come a little quicker? Well, it's five years initially, and then the additional five extensions or up to five years is discretionary. It's uh, subject to review by the city. And That's only for the development agreement, not for the um, project itself, right? The project is only a one-year extension, isn't it? Um, well, th we're approving a one-year extension for the plot plan, and we're reapproving the conditional use permits. And by doing that, we're we're um, allowing the development agreement because if we have valid entitled projects, the development agreement can extend the life of those projects beyond the the life that's allowed under Ordinance 348. So. Um, if, you, if the development agreement wasn't approved and all we were approving was this extension of time on the plot plan, the plot plan would only be good for one more year and the conditional use permits would be good for another three years. The development agreement, um, if it's approved, will automatically extend the life of all of these entitlements, the plot plan and the three conditional use permits for five years. And then when that five year term is up, then we re-review if the project hasn't been constructed, whether or not we want to grant additional, whether or not we want to extend the life of the development agreement. And by extending the life of the development agreement, we would extend the life of these entitlements. Is that more clear? See, my question was pertaining to that time element because it says that in June of 2010, it was approved by the council. So in essence, it's already been approved for four years, yet nothing's been done, and now they want another 10 years on top of that when the original agreement said two years with three or one extension, so it would have been five years total. So in essence, they're asking for 15 years now, is the way I see it. Because um, originally two plus three, that's five. Now they want five plus an extra five, that's 15. Is there a way if we approve this, we can basically revert back to the old one and say okay we're extending the one year and i understand the 2016 timeline for the line a that they're talking about can't we say well up until the end of 2016 is when you have to start otherwise then it's done because I, I think this has been going on long enough you can recommend to the city council that a provision be in the development agreement that says they must commence construction by a specified period of time it would then be up to the council to decide whether or not it, it, it would modify the development agreement consistent with your recommendation. How does the rest of the council feel about that? I'm just... Uh, nope. Yellow. This one. Um, it's been my uh, perception that um, Line A has been a significant obstacle in getting this project off the ground. Is that correct? And um, having floated through there during the last rainy season, I can see where uh, this this whole project would would really benefit if we got that line A done. And so I'm wondering, uh, is there a a contingency that's based on line A's completion? Do we know when line A is going to be completed? They haven't made any kind of uh, excavation over there. The, uh, city in, the city engineer will be able to comment on that because he's made several comments about the, his pleasure with how quickly they're moving forward. Thank you, Mr. LeClaire. Uh, yes, the first stage of Line A is proceeding on schedule and will be completed by December. And that, that phase takes it from the river all the way just, just to the west side of the 215. Okay, and then the uh, second phase, which will take it from that part on the 15 where the first phase ended through our city out past Briggs to Briggs uh, Basin, uh, that should be completed within 14 months, uh, putting the completion middle of, middle of 16. So that project is scheduled to go to bid, I was told, October. So... They are on schedule. It is moving forward. So when they when they agreed this, when the council agreed to this development agreement, did this project have to pay their share of those fees for for buildings line A? Did they, you, have they already paid them? 
No, they would not have already paid them because they have not been issued or asked for billing permits. Okay. They would be subject to the um, fees in place at the time that they requested permits. And uh, I, I assume that there's a pretty large dollar figure attached to that fee associated with this project for Depends on how you define large. In my, <laughs> in my opinion, it would be large. <laughs> be large. Okay. Um, so go ahead. You had some more. Well, I, just what Jonathan was saying in the discussion that uh, Commissioner Phillips was on, the line A. So we're looking at maybe that line A being completed, you said, by the middle of 2016, if they're, since they're on schedule. Correct. Based on, based on the, the schedule that we know, however, um, it is dependent upon weather during that construction season, and uh, they are predicting some heavy rains this year. So it could, it could possibly be pushed out to the end of 2016, okay. depending upon weather. So could we, what, what um, Charles, you were saying is what we could put in the condition. Could we put anything in the condition giving them a two-year, say, time frame? Is that a wise instead of the extension that could be five years that we'd like to see some building started in a two-year well you're being asked to make a recommendation to the City Council your recommendation can be for the approval of the different resolutions that are included in your staff report with the provision that the council limit the amount of time instead of five years to some other number okay. or instead of five years plus extensions only the five years then the council would take your recommendation and they would make an ultimate decision. Okay. How does the other commissioners feel about something like that? I, I, would, I would ask Mr. LeClaire from his many years of experience. Uh, Charles, if from your experience putting that kind of a, a pushing, you know, what happens if they don't build it, then they got to start from scratch, file all new payoff fees and everything. Is it effective to shorten the timeline? Does that motivate developers or does it just create a problem when they, the market is not driven to develop this project at that time? In my experience, the, um, the limitation of a development agreement doesn't, doesn't um, encourage the development to take place. It just puts a limit on them. They may try a little bit harder to, to get tenants so that they can move forward, but the market is what the market is, and when it's ripe, uh, they'll take advantage of it and it'll be built. They do not, in this agreement, uh, limit the city's ability to change its fees and impose fees, so with the exception of having to go through the public hearing process, and as Lisa commented on, the neighborhood has made comment that it wants a shopping center in this vicinity, um, short of some incredible changes to the, the population out there, um, the only thing you would be doing by shortening this would be placing the developer into a position where they've got to make an application, go through public hearings again, and go through this process again. That's my point. I don't think we would be helping them by putting them, the, the initial thought is it would encourage them, but really you would just be making it financially and procedurally more difficult, I think, by doing that. So. Now, the only other question is, were the fees that were agreed to in this development agreement back when the fees were cut in half and we went through that nonsense? Fees have not been agreed to. Oh. There so has not be been a pre there, has, there have been no previous development agreements. This is a new development agreement, and there's no provisions in this development agreement that limit the fees that the city will charge. Whatever fees are in place at the point of pulling building permits, uh, or whatever point a fee is uh, applicable will still apply. So there's no real financial reason for us getting higher fees or anything out of them. So Correct. I wouldn't say. But could we do a, could we do a limited um, provision where we give them the five years and with with n no extension available? Well, we can. Would that be a, you think, or I'd to come I'd back and look at it, the wording? I like to hold up because now I think it's changing from questions of staff to now it's discussion, so which we can have that's after. True. That's true. So I think now may be the time that we open a public hearing, okay. unless someone else has another question of staff. Okay, then it's 737. I think it's time to open a public hearing. 
I'll confirm that the legal notice was published and the correspondence received in your blue folders is from David Alexander. Thank you. You're welcome. He knew that, he was just testing Yes, you. I know. <laughs> and She's I, got my back. I do not have speakers on this item. No speakers? Yeah. And would he like to speak? Oh. He only gets one minute though. <laughs> It with several good. extensions. <laughs> I'm with uh, the Rancon Group. We are the, the developer of Heritage Square. We do a lot of work in the city of Menifee. Um, this project, we started in <coughs> 2004, 2005. We work with the school districts. We work with the communities. We work with a number of different people in the county and then at the city as well. The reason for the development agreement and for the extension of five years is Jonathan cannot guarantee me when I will have line A in. That has been our problem from day one. We, we cannot start anything. We can't get a building permit. We can't do anything until that line is in. And for us to have uh, the plot plan approval, it requires no longer, not even just say we're going to go do it. We have to have a foundation on the ground and sticks in the air. That is the code requirement for the plot plan to technically be approved. So you got to figure for the time he puts line A in or mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. ADP puts it in, I should say, um, then we have to put building permits, we have to go out and construct it and construct it and put the foundation in and put sticks in the air. That is the requirement of the plot plans to, to be truly approved. So you could be grading and all of a sudden your plot plan will expire. That is, a, that is the law today under Ordinance 348. It's in the county, it's also in the cities. So um, that's why we asked for five years because, again, we can't tell when line A will be guaranteed. Then after that, we have to go through the whole city process to get building permits and et cetera, et cetera, and then physically go out and build everything. So, and that's the reason for the extension. And after five years, what we said was we wanted five one-year extensions. So every year, if there was a problem, i.e. with the building or line A, whoops, excuse me, line A or something else, we could come back to you and say, okay, folks, we need some help because we're not quite to the finish line yet and we want to make sure we don't get hurt because we're going to go out and spend millions and millions of dollars building this facility. And by the way, we've already paid a million dollars into the area drainage plan for this community. So we've already paid a lot of the fees in advance. And we sit on the, one of our members sits on the board of the ADP, the area drainage plan. So we're quite familiar with the area drainage plan. So we know the timing, we know everything else. And so just to be safe, we don't want to have any problems. We work closely with all the staff and everybody else in Menifee, and so we found them to be great to work with, and we want to make sure we don't have any problems. And that's the only reason for the extensions. Any questions? Thanks for that for that. Yes. <laughs> Did that help, I hope? Yes, yes thank you. Because I was worried about line A being yeah, such a significant impact. It, it, it's huge. I mean, um, mm -hmm. if all goes well between Jeff Stone and Flood and putting their money in and the federal and the state and everybody else, we all have enough money to build um, portions of it. How long, Jonathan, is it going to take to build all of the ADP? Counting uh, Juniper Flats? Everything. We're, we're actually, we're the, taking dirt out of Juniper Flats over the, the period. Well, uh, the, the piece that benefits you should be in place by, by mid-2016, should it all go well. And I... I did meet with Dusty a week ago, okay. uh, going over the other pieces that I'm required to uh, to complete for FEMA, mm -hmm. and uh, he is really pushing me on it because of the, the, the schedule is moving very quickly. Correct. Now, also, Rancon is the one that put the Menifee Road extension in. I don't know if you're familiar with that, but we put the missing link in as well. Flashing light. Yeah. yeah. We, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's and so right. we, we spent $7 million with our financial partner put in that, the missing link. Um, and so we, we've been trying to help the city. It was not a requirement at the time to put it in. We were conditioned, if you read the conditions, you put it in later on. But the city came to us and said, would you put it in? We said, we're, and that's when Sean Nelson was here, and we found some ways between the city and the developer to put that whole road in. So to a big surprise to us, there was a lot of problems, let's just say. So we spent a little bit more money than we anticipated. So we are um, in the city of Menifee as a partner. Thank you. So my question is, as you're well aware of what the timing is for line, 
the line. And so Jonathan's basically saying two years from now, it should your portion that we would, should be complete. Right. Is your intent as soon as it's complete to start yes, work? We would, yes. Oh, well, we would, if we see line A moving along, and we see line A, we think it's going to happen. And there's no reason it should not happen, but we'll watch it very closely. And if we think everything's going to hit within four to six months prior to we think it's going to be completed, we'll start submitting the plans, everything else, because it takes about six months to get permits and everything else. So once we know lines A is in, we can pull the building permit, because that is a condition for us, we can then start. But again, unless you're willing to guarantee me today, we can't do that, because I can't go to a bank or our financial partners or anybody and say, we want to spend $10 million on a new shopping center that we can't open because we don't have flood control issues, which is a, it's a real problem. We've looked at building half of the project and putting basins on the project. We have looked at every which way but Sunday to make the project go. We have people calling us all the time in the El Dorado project, in the Heritage Lakes project, all the surrounding area for, for the shopping center. So your intent is time is of the essence and you do want to start not because the, the way it sounds when you ask for five years and five more years it's like oh we're going to push it 10 years down the road it costs us money every day i i understand but i'm just trying to look out for the public's right. interest right. and it, that's it, how it sounds we, we want the only reason we did that was when we wrote it we weren't you know we were still working on the adp and the air drainage plan and when the line a would go in and, and that's when we wrote it that way we weren't sure and to, you you still can guarantee me today that it's going to be in that all of a sudden the county comes in and swoops in and they've got an emergency down the road. I don't anticipate that happen, but they steal the money. Because I work with the city of Wildemar and they're complaining that we, that the city of Menifee stole all the money. I'll be honest <laughs> with you. I, I was there a meeting yesterday. They were complaining about it yesterday because they had flood control problems. So we just want to make sure we have enough time to complete our project. That's all we're asking for. Nothing more, nothing less. Thank you. I have a question for yes. you. Um, if how aggressive have you been pursuing uh, to fill those uh, pads? Yeah, when, at one time, when we were ready to start in, I think it was 07, this is before the ADP it really set going, um, we thought we could build, we literally had State of Brothers signed up and we had, I think CVS and we had maybe 50% of it with tenants. We lost State of Brothers because, of course, you know, we couldn't do anything in there. They've signed up down the road. So uh, until we know we can open the doors, <coughs> we've talked to, we have a, we are a real estate brokerage firm as well. So we're in the commercial department or industry, we'll just say, talking to these people all the time. We won't have a problem. Once we know we can go, um, we're going to fill this thing up. We won't have a problem getting major a shopping center in there and pharmacies and everything else. There's enough <coughs> demographics. There's enough income in the area to really support a very successful area. Mm -hmm. I know, I hear from those residents almost every day in Heritage. I agree with you. I mean, so. and, and to be honest with you, we're doing a major, we have a major component just down the road in Winchester, which is just over the hill at, beyond Briggs, and we're doing 3,700 homes there. And so we are quite familiar with what's You may not want to say that too loud in here. <laughs> <laughs> it's afraid, it's, that's been there since 1999, mm. I hate to tell you. <laughs> we're way, way away before that comes to mind. But, um, but it, it, again, we're in the business. This is what we do for a living. That's, that's what we try to do. We try to do the very best we can. That's one thing Rancon does, is we do the very, very best we can. We produce Is there a content. way you can get a quality restaurant in that shopping center? <laughs> I mean, we have a 1,001 fast food joints that offer no nutrition <laughs> whatsoever. I would like to see. What do you classify as um, quality restaurants? That's the question. Sit down. Well, sit down restaurants. Sit down you know. No, not sitting down in Jack in the Box. No. Nice. <laughs> I mean, are you talking uh, Cheesecake Factory? Are you talking like We have a, a council member who would approve your mm -hmm. property if you put in a Cheesecake I, Factory. Every, no, but every it, city but it, wants a but, Cheesecake Factory. But a Sizzler's a, yeah. you know, uh, sit we, down. We understand that. there will be restaurants. I can't guarantee you, but we'll certainly try because um, it certainly fits what the need is in the area. I like a we'll good Italian restaurant. You, know, you, you name it. We'll have it. All will be there. It's, it's a neighborhood shopping center. It's going to be a quality like neighborhood a nice shopping center. Quality Not shopping like center. the Rouse. I guarantee you that. <laughs> did you Sorry build, to say it, but did, did you build that? No. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm glad you were here.
Are there any other speakers? No public testimony, sir. Okay, then um, I guess we're going to close the public hearing at 747, and now the commission can discuss it. Well, I think it's a slam dunk. We have we had the explanation. And, uh, I make a motion that we approve each of the items. As a second. As presented in the staff report. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Second. I'll take a roll call vote. Thank you. You're welcome. Commissioner Phillips. Aye. Commissioner Sobeck. Aye. Commissioner Thomas. Aye. Vice Chair Metalco. Yes. And I'll note that Chair Lise Meyer recused himself. Thank you. You're welcome. Since I still have the power, <laughs> <laughs> now it's gone. You went a little crazy while you were gone. Sorry about that, Mark. It's all right. <laughs> I went through that entire staff report and wrote down notes and everything. I didn't even realize who was doing it. So that was my bad. I am sorry to everybody. All right, item I point two, the public hearing for the adoption of the environmental determination and ordinance repeal uh, regarding the noise control standards within the city. Mr. LeClaire, do you have a staff report? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Commissioners, the item before you tonight is a development code amendment. You may recall that at your July 22nd meeting, you presented with material that had been originally presented to the city council. They'd reviewed it, they made some suggestions, and then they, um, because it's a development code amendment, forwarded on to the Planning Commission for your review and recommendation back to them. At your tw July 22nd meeting, you had a variety of questions and suggestions for changes to the material. Uh, you also had one commissioner that had provided staff with written comments that you asked to be incorporated into the material. What you have before you tonight is that document. We have highlighted the various changes for you that's in the staff report. Staff believes that the material is now presented if all of the changes that are suggested here are um, forwarded to the City Council would be a sound enforceable document. What I recommend to you is that you um, receive public comment and that following that and following any questions and or discussion on the item that you move to forward this item to the City Council as presented within the staff report. All right, thank you, Mr. McClure. Any uh, questions of staff? Yeah, I have one on yes. page three, number uh, number E, it's one of the exemptions. Um, I have a concern, it says the exemptions, public schools and school sponsor activities. Um, I'm wondering why private was um, taken out of there because we have Santa Rosa Academy. The same question. Because this is an exemption. We want to be able to enforce the code on private schools so that okay but I don't want it enforced on Santa Rosa Academy. Uh, because what if they have, for the same reasons you have a public school, so say you have a Paloma and you have a football game, it's allowed to go later, the noise, right? That's the purpose of that exemption, is it mm -hmm. not? So what if Santa Rosa has a football game and it goes late and, you, and, and, and code enforcement says, no, you're a private school, you have to shut down. That's what I want to prevent. So then convince your other commissioners to I actually had that, that I have that same thing marked in red ink. Mm -hmm. um, I think I'm a, I'm aware and I've heard that Santa Rosa is working on a stadium and mm -hmm. a gym Finally or or at least a gym, I'm not for sure. Um, I was concerned about that taken out as well. Yeah. I would agree. But I have a quick technical question. So say a a Paloma Valley has a football game and it goes till midnight cuz overtime or whatever. Are there sound there must be some kind of limitations or standards on the school of what they cannot can and cannot do at a public school. I mean, not that, is there not any that's decibel level limits? Is there not any? that's controlled by uh, city zoning codes. What, what it, does control it? Uh, you probably could have, uh, if you've got sound that's of such a nature that it's a physical harm, then health and safety laws oh, would go into laws. effect, <laughs> but not zoning laws. Then I would make a motion that we, well, we uh, just by motion, but just by consensus, it'll be. Consensus. Yeah, I, I'd in. like to. Well, we got to go through the motion with the yeah. public hearing first. So. Okay. Any other questions of staff? 
All right. Uh, we'll open the public hearing. Madam Clerk, this is legally published. Yes, sir. And any correspondence regarding the item? No, sir. Any speaker slips? I have no speaker slips on this item. All right. We'll close the public hearing back up. It's 851. Um, bring you behind the dates for discussion. So, Commissioner Thomas, it sounds like we have a consensus to remove the private school portion on E. Are there any other modifications or? Well, to to uh, um, to allow private schools to be exempt. To, to be clear, we're yeah. removing the stricken portion. Yeah. Yep. Well, wouldn't it be easier just to say schools and schools sponsored activities versus public and private? I mean, a school's a school, right? Well, when it was originally written, we wanted to make a distinction so that you'd have the opportunity to decide just what you decided. And yes, if you so, so desire, we can strike private versus public and make it just schools. But can you give me, a, for instance, why that'd be a bad idea? Just no, it's just traffic schools or. I, I think it's good to be clear. I like where it says public or private. It makes yeah. it very clear. I think. I think it, the, just in case, as the attorney just commented, just in case there's some distinction in some law or some other Kate court, court case uh, that would make a difference. Correct. Public and private schools sponsored Okay, I'm, I'm going to, I'd like to just have a little dis discussion. I'm going to go back to the discussion we had at the last meeting where we talked about the construction time. We kind of left, what page okay, I'm looking at page actually seven, number three, the staff report. We, we left the last meeting with, with, we should just make it all the same, home and uh, cons uh, public construction sites. No, noise and, is noise. And but you know what, as I left, I, I had this thought, and I thought, you know, there needs to be a distinction between work sites and homes. And so... I actually went on my Facebook page and I put the question out. I put the question out there, letting, writing exactly what we already had and just getting an opinion. And nobody who was of a residence thought that we should have let construction start at 6 a.m. I got a split between 7 a.m. and 8 a.m. One person asked that we uh, make a difference between in if there say there was a homeowner and they were doing uh, maybe construction projects inside the garage or inside the home would that be different than outside the home and I all of these little things just brought up some consideration that we needed to think about and so I do um, believe that there needs to be a difference uh, I don't believe that we should go with the 6 a.m. on the residential. We did put it all, um, staff put it all into one as we had asked them, but I just don't think it's a wise decision. So do you have, do you have recommendations? I would recommend 7 a.m. Uh, for, for the home, uh, <coughs> home sites, homeowners, com, com, uh, for private home, residents. Home versus, uh, versus commercial or job site um, instead of the 6 a.m. I have one question. Mm -hmm. The one question I had was um, I think the earlier hours were uh, based on daylight savings time and seasonal uh, hours where the earlier time would be more beneficial. Um, and I'm wondering whether that was considered when you it, did your uh, I did. Facebook? I, I mm -hmm. did. I, I actually mentioned it like we had it the months. Like it just says here June through September. Right. Or October through May. I actually, I just said it just like we had, just to get an idea. It just no one thought 6 a.m. was good for residential. Um, it was a split between 7 a.m. and 8 a.m for residential so and i apologize forgot to turn my phone off oh it's you <laughs> <laughs> i was wondering it's like awesome. <laughs> Interesting music coming out. Get some background music now i was seeing how melodramatic <laughs> <laughs> okay so um quiet hours are between 6 p.m and 6 a.m for job site related items and then six 
seven for residential. Is that your distinction? Say that again, sorry. Six to six for commercial related activities, six to seven for residential related activities? No, residential would be seven a.m. They A lot of them, 7 a.m. to 8 p.m., they were fine with that. Uh, some were 8 a.m. to 7 p.m. So I thought we should take an average. <laughs> Just thinking about residential. Um, also, maybe a difference between residential and then acreage. If you lived out in an acreage and you wanted to weed eat your yard and you don't have anyone around you, um, I'm sure 7 a.m. would be fine. Who would call the complaint? Right. 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 Tree so falls. Right. Why, why create right. a standard that wouldn't ever be used? Okay. So one more time. Residential quiet uh, hours are what? 7 a.m. 7 a.m. Okay. So that's working hours are 7 a.m. to 8? They have in the, yeah, in the summer times, maybe October, uh, excuse me, that would be June through September. So you're June changing one number on that paragraph where it says 7 p.m. and 6, excuse me, 6 p.m. and 6 a.m. the following morning. It would be you 7 a.m. 7 a.m. So yes. you're changing that one number. Yes, okay. that would be my suggestion. Actually, it would be, <clears throat> she had mentioned 8 p.m., going as far as 8 p.m., so maybe make it 7 to 7 or something. Or do you want to leave it at 6? Well, summertime, you, you would conceivably work later at night, yeah. right? Yeah, so so yeah you can actually do 7 to 7 in the summertime. Yeah. So 7 to 7? Seven. 7 to 7? Seven? 7 to 7. What's the consensus of the council? Chris, are you amenable? I'm easy on any of those guys, I don't, whatever they want. Uh, I don't have problems with it. I, I think in a residential situation, people are going to do what they want, and it's just a matter of being nice to your neighbors. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and I think yeah. it's kind of splitting hairs because I mean, like a utility is going to be exempt, street repairs right. are going to be exempt, emergencies are exempt. So, I mean, this is all planned stuff, and usually the contractors stuff try to work. They don't want to, you know, tee off the residents, so they're they're trying to do what's what's the right thing anyway. Yeah. Semantics. Yeah. So. So we have a consensus for change up to seven to seven for summer hours. What was the, because this, this change from what 348 was, correct? 348, didn't it specify? 348 was inconsistent with the uh, other parts of the, of the code, and this was just bringing that into alignment with that. You are now, again, taking it out of consistency with uh, that portion of the building code. Uh, so, but... I'm, I'm the, tr trying to remember because where, where we got from here, we only varied, I think, from the the one we adopted from the county. I think we changed it by one hour correct. or something. Just, just one, of the, yeah. one of the two hours. And so now we're, we're basically going back to what it was. You're going back to one of them and changing. Another. Okay. Instead of going this way, you're going that way. Yeah. And the recommendation to the council will be to just to correct the, the building's code instead of the land use code. Okay. Any other modifications? <laughs> Hearing none, we could entertain a motion with those corrections. So we chose to do that. I make a motion okay. that we, uh, are we make, sending it to the, are we sending it for council for approval? Actually, can I make a clarification, or just ask a question here on page eight. It talks about in yellow for construction activities on Sunday. <coughs> uh, which oh, page are you on? Page, page eight. Page. Is that saying that Sunday they can't do construction? Correct. That's in a any. That's even in a field that's being graded or something. Technically, that's correct. But if nobody complains, then nobody's going to enforce it. I'm, I'm a believer in the Sabbath, but I I don't want to uh, necessarily force my views on anyone else. So. Interesting, I didn't know there was Sunday. And code enforcement doesn't work on Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> no, we have code enforcement varied throughout the week. So. Oh, really? Yes. Oh, I didn't know that. So I'd like to make a motion that we forward a recommendation to the City Council. For the As modified? Amendment. As modified. Ad adopting the new chapter, do we say 9.9? 9.09? .9? You can just reference as, reference as in the staff report. Okay, references in staff report. 
We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, do you need a roll call vote? Yeah, I think you need yeah, a roll call vote. Please do a roll call vote. Aye. Commissioner Phillips? Aye. Commissioner Sobek? Aye. Commissioner Thomas? Aye. Vice Chair Metalko? Yes. Chair Leesmeyer? Aye. All right. That'll do it for public hearings. Back to the front of my agenda. Apologize. Discussion. We have uh, item 10.1. Uh, discussion regarding um, ratifying the regular planning commission meeting dates mr. LeClaire we had a technical issue with the way the previous uh, resolution was adopted we're simply asking you to uh, make a motion second and then vote on the adoption to uh, adopt the resolution changing your meeting date Do I like to make a motion so the 22nd will be is that a Wednesday that's our first 27th would be the first one, which is consistent with what you decided last time anyway. Okay. I better change my agenda. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we have a motion. Is there something? I'd like to make a motion then that we um, accept resolution changing the commission's regular meetings from Tuesday to Wednesday. Second. Motion. There's a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Last Such a rule. Such a rule. Yeah. All right, uh, item number 11, uh, Mr. LeClerc. Thank you, just wanted to remind you that you uh, will be having a workshop to discuss the first several chapters that you have been provided uh, for in regards to the new development code. In addition, we are certainly hoping, although we understand if you don't get to, <coughs> we have finally completed our draft of the, or we're very close to completing the draft on the economic development corridor zoning districts because that's the area in which most people have expressed interest in uh, developing land and so we're pushing that particular uh, chapter forward but as was previously discussed you are simply going to have a workshop to begin at page one and work through as far as you can comfortably deal with uh, at next meeting and then we'll schedule another workshop and continue on from where you leave off so that would be on the 27th then correct And that agenda will have uh, one public hearing, that workshop, and potentially a second workshop. So do you want to be in at 6 o'clock instead of 7, or is 7 fine? Chris, you're usually on a tight schedule. Uh, so I can get out. It's be here by 6. That's okay. 6 is fine. 6 is good. We have a quorum. 6 form. is okay. So we noted. Thank you. All right. Any other comments, sir? No, thank you. Any commissioner comments tonight? Just want to thank everybody for being here, supporting the system. Um, I do have some comments. Uh, Jen, if you wouldn't have the number one there. Um, on May 11th, 2010, the Planning Commission voted unanimously to revoke all permits associated with this project known as Bailiwick Park. Um, as a result of my tromping around the neighborhood, I recognize that this uh, property is being inhabited again. And uh, to my knowledge, the issues still exist as they did in 2010 when all the permits were revoked. So I am seeking a consensus of the, of the commission that we uh, forward notice up to the city attorney's office that we process this for um, a follow-up visit, possible abatement. The commission has already taken action to revoke and this is an active code enforcement case. So the city attorney's, the uh, code enforcement individual in the city attorney's office is already on this. Mr. Kwan. That is correct. What Charles stated, it's an ongoing case. Um, we cannot discuss uh, this in detail in public um, because it is still ongoing and open. Okay. Well, I just want to make sure that it is, there is something happening there because I've been getting a lot of complaints from residents. Right. We are aware, and it's my understanding, that, that steps are being taken. <laughs> And I, and I did want to actually recognize Mr. Yoder's. I actually read the minutes from that meeting, and he said you wouldn't even take your dog there. So I did go through all that. Uh, number two. Mm -hmm. 
This is a property that's located at the corner of Getz and Avenida Robles, also known as APN 341-133014. Uh, there's about five trailers sitting on this property. I've had conversations with Ms. Gordon about this. There was a talk about a bakery coming in here. Um, these trailers have been sitting here racking up code violation after code violation and nothing's being done out there. Uh, same, same situation here. I just want to try and light a fire there because this is a hard corner in the middle of Quail Valley and I'm getting a lot of complaints from people out there saying that they feel like their area is a dumping ground. And uh, these things being right in the heart of one of the areas, it's setting a precedence for a lot of other things out there. We understand and code enforcement is active on this one as well. Okay. <clears throat> and the last one. I'm not going to name off where this property is, but it is definitely in the city of Menifee. Um, I'm no botanist, but I know what marijuana looks like. <laughs> so I am actually seeking a consensus of the commission that we request the city council to begin working on an urgency ordinance to prevent large-scale marijuana grows that are popping up across the city. We need to empower staff to do something about this. This is a very, very large grow in the middle of the city. This is a police issue. There are, under the laws and decisions that have been made relative to uh, medical marijuana, individuals are allowed to have X number of Ten. buds and plants. And it's my understanding from the sheriff's office it's 99. Uh, and we have a problem which we are aware of and we're the attorney's office is attempting to to come up with something that would um, allow us to prevent the collectivization of we, we're ending up with three four five six individuals being a, um, uh, all being on the ownership or rentership of a property and so collectively you potentially has 600 plants. correct right and so the city attorney's office is working on something but unfortunately this issue is a very tough nut to crack and um, we we hopefully will have something uh, from the city's attorney's office that would allow us to to move forward with this kind of a uh, of a situation where it is a clear in my opinion abuse of um, the allowances made by that proposition and uh uh, in fact, I was going to bring this up similar to what you just said. The county is working on an ordinance right now that if you have more than is it nine or ten that plants, you can be fined ten thousand uh, dollars. Are you familiar with that? What the county is proposing? I would no, suggest no. maybe council you look up what what they're going through right now. I think they're going through public hearings on it, but it's to it's to address this very issue. Um, and what it does is it it allows conformity with the fed with the state law that allows us minimum number but it reduces that number greatly and gives teeth to the municipality to be able to find and seize the plants i think it's above nine or ten plants um so you might want to look at the county ordinance and i would i would like like that's something i'm glad you brought that up i wanted to maybe consider drafting something and making a recommendation to council mm -hmm. with with regards to future agenda items. I mean, I don't know if we want to talk about this anymore without agendizing it, but, you know, I'd, I'd be interested in looking into working with the council on an ordinance on this because, you know, in my opinion, to ever to be so humble, something like this should be screened from the public. This is right on the public right away, on the way to an elementary school and within a football's distance of a small church. Depending upon how it comes, what the outcome of the numbers issue is, if the numbers through some uh, ordinance is reduced to eliminate these then yes uh, then it would not come back but if for some reason it can't then you do have a legitimate concern that can be raised for the community impacts by the visual effect of this and you can uh, bring that back as a code amendment to establish standards to to uh, monitor these such as requiring uh, screening and uh, road improvements driveways for parking etc yeah, would this be considered like a business and they should have a business license? And and again, that's a, that's a, <laughs> since, since the proposition allows collectives, um, but collectives aren't meant to be for profit, unless we know they're doing it for profit, we have to assume that they're doing it in conformance with the, the proposition. And so 
it's a, it's a series of technicalities. And uh, like, as I said, the, um, uh, the city attorney is working uh, or is investigating what we can do relative to this situation along with the, the sheriff's office. I'll be sure to forward your concerns to Julie and the rest of the team. Yes. And thank you for bringing that to our attention. Yep. And there commissioner comments? Yeah, one other one similar to this. Um, I'm on the, on the Temecula Mount of Posse, and so I, I work with the Sheriff's Department in Temecula, and one of our officers, liaison officers, one of her jobs is monitoring uh, massage parlors. She goes out and mm -hmm. uh, checks their licenses and stuff, and one thing she does is she monitors the websites um, to, to see if there's other non-professional services being rendered. And she forwarded me a bunch of emails that there's one here right on the Han Circle. There's a, uh, right here in the Han Professional Building, I think it is, this medical one, there's a massage parlor where if you get on the website, um, there's people who've left comments like rankings when you go to a restaurant of what special services were provided. So I'm not sure if code enforcement it has an active case there or not, but you may want to. Um, That's not a code enforcement. That's not a land use issue. Okay. That's a policing yeah. issue, and well, let's the police, police department is aware of, and they have made comments at staff meetings about the, this particular problem, not that particular, this particular problem of yeah. massage parlors and so forth, and that's being worked on as well. Well, let, let's have it noted in the record that at this particular one, which I think is ridiculous because people made a comment to me, it's right next to City Hall and you can't do anything about it. Yeah, right. Um, <laughs> so maybe we could have whoever needs to know at staff make a particular visit and look up the websites and whatever we have to do legally to shut that down because less than reputable things are occurring there. Hearing no other commissioner comments, we can entertain a motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn. There's a okay. motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 It's, it's so bold out there. The Sheriff's Department is... <laughs>